So today we're talking about pilot medicals with Dr. Rob Simpson. But first, I want to share with you my biggest tip about pilot medicals, and that is get your medical first. If you have any problems, you don't want to be finding out a week before you go solo. So join us this episode when we go into detail. Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Today we're talking medicals and we've got Dr. Rob Simpson sat with us here. Hello Rob, how are Hello. you? Good morning. Excellent, okay, so we're going to concentrate mainly on medicals for recreational pilots today. Now one thing I notice, it doesn't matter what medical people are coming in for, they're sat in the reception area, they're telling me stories, they've been on a diet, they've quit drinking coffee and they look pretty scared. So let's dispel the myth today, you are not Dr. Death. <laughs> no indeed, no, just a normal doctor, just a normal, normal person, doctor. absolutely. Okay, Yeah. so you know, there's, there's no reason why people should be uh, worried about their medicals at all. Uh, but let's just go through uh, medicals quickly. So there's three types of medicals we'll briefly talk about today. So the first one is the LAPL. So if anyone doesn't know what the LAPL is, it's the Light Aeroplane Pilot's License, and that has its own medical. So as a minimum requirement, you need an LAPL medical for an LAPL. However, if you have a higher grade of medical, such as a class two or a class one, that can be used, okay? So Rob, the LAPL medical, how long does it last for? So it depends on your age, but under the age of 40, it's five years. Okay, so same as the class two, isn't it? Yeah, yep, yeah. Uh, under 40. Um, okay. Over the age of 40, it's two years. And, and I think the big difference is over the age of 50, it remains two years as well. Okay. Um, rather than the class two, which becomes annual after the age yeah. of 50. And who can grant one of those? Um, so two two types of doctors, um, okay. either your own GP, okay. um, again a big difference to the PPL in class one, so uh, LAPL can be granted by your GP, okay. or an AME, like somebody like myself. Okay, now from my experience I had um, difficulties getting my class two, so I went down to a LAPL. Yep. Um, from my experience only, and I'm not sure if you can concur with this, but uh, GPs generally don't seem to like doing lapel medicals and I think maybe it's because it's not their day-to-day -day thing they perhaps don't understand the paperwork and things um, so my recommendation would always be to go to an AME so that you've got somebody who's aviation related would you agree with yeah that? no I think I, I, I would agree with that I think the GPs are probably understandably reluctant because mm -hmm. you do need to understand what the regulations and the requirements are yeah um, broadly they're based on group two driving standards so HGV okay. standards okay. Um, but there are a number of exceptions okay. um, uh, for the LAPL uh, that are different to group two standards and okay. I think do you know uh, what those are so there, there are about 25 different exceptions <laughs> okay. and they're generally speaking around uh, cardiac neurological conditions right, okay. um, or mental health um, okay. conditions but uh, if you look on the uh, CAA website it's yeah. very easy to find that list okay. uh, of exceptions if you have any of those conditions yeah. your even your lap will have to be done by an AME. Right okay. Private pilot's license and it's class 2 medical or higher so if you have a class 1 my understanding is that you're automatically granted a class 2 is that correct? Yes, yeah. yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So if you have a class one, you have class two privileges, uh, and that's for five years as well, is it? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, if, if you had a class one, then you've got five years of class two yeah. privileges Brilliant. if you're under the age of 40. Okay. Um, yeah. Brilliant, okay. And again, who can grant a class two medical? So a class two is an AME only, yeah. so that cannot okay. be done by anybody other than an AME. Brilliant, okay. And class one, so if you're a class one, that's only going to be people who are potentially looking at a commercial career. Yes. Um, so class one, you have to have a class one initial. Yeah. Where can you get a class one initial? So a class one initial can only be done at an Aero Medical Centre. Okay. Um, so there, there are currently three of those in the UK. Okay. Um, your revalidation or renewal medicals can be done with an AME. Brilliant, okay. So if you're looking for an AME, where's the best place to find contact details for an AME? So two places. The official place is to go on the CAA website. Mm -hmm. um, there is a list on the right-hand side when you get to the CAA's homepage. Click okay. on Medicals, yep. scroll down, and there is Find an AME. Brilliant. Okay. Is there any steps that a student should take before they book their medical? 
Um, so uh, different AMEs will have uh, slightly differing practices uh, okay. as to how their booking system works. Uh, somebody booking with me, I tend to do um, a telephone conversation at the point of booking, okay. and the first thing they need to do is register with the CAA portal. Okay. Brilliant, okay. So that, that's on the CAA website? It is, yeah. yeah to okay. apply through the CAA, and that can take up to 10 working days, so I advise people to do that straight away. Brilliant, okay, no worries. Yeah. Um, so talk us, let's, let's go with the class two, because I think that probably fits yeah. mainly with the kind of clientele we deal with. Yeah. So class two, talk us through a typical class two medical, what you're looking for, what the requirements yeah. are. So a, a, a class two initial, which is uh, for anybody new to flying, that's the mm -hmm. medical they're going to get, you take about an hour. Okay. All in. Yeah. Um, there's quite a bit of paperwork for a class two initial. Um, so it takes a little bit longer than your yeah. renewal and revalidation medicals. Um, but there's there's no real secret to the medicals. It's fairly straightforward stuff. Um, really what we're interested in is, um, so if I talk you through a medical, there's some basic medical demographics we cover, such as mm -hmm. height and weight, yeah. because we want to know that your BMI or body mm -hmm. mass index is within an acceptable limit. Now for flying, uh, it's relatively generous. So if your BMI is under 35, mm -hmm. you're good to go. Um, sure mine does fit in yeah, there. Yeah, even mine fits into that. But, um, uh, if you're over that, then that does require some extra um, testing and investigations just okay. because of the additional yes. cardiovascular yeah. risk that sits um, with being a little larger. Um, then we move on to some other basics, so blood pressure. Mm -hmm. We want to know that your blood pressure is uh, within a safe range. Okay. Um, heart rate, obviously. Um, we test vision, so vision's clearly critical for flying. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we test that at three distances, so near vision, intermediate yeah. vision, and distance. Okay. Um, and that can be corrected, so you, that is your best corrected vision with your right. glasses. Okay, so if you wear glasses, obviously bring them to the medical. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. So you'd be surprised the number of people who, who do wear glasses who either don't bring them on the day or bring different glasses to the ones they intend to fly in, uh, which is always a mystery to me. Do you need the prescription as well? Uh, it's very helpful if you bring the prescription. Right, okay. So technically for a class two, I don't need the prescription as long as okay. you meet the standard, but it's really useful to have. So if you didn't have a prescription, the likelihood is if you rang up your, um, you know, like if you use Vision Express or something, they'd be able yeah. to have your old prescription sent yeah, over. Yes, so and they'll be able to send it through. So what they can't do is in the medical do that because they usually right. won't give you that information over the phone. Right, okay. They certainly won't give it to me. Okay. Um, they'll prefer to email it you or post it you. So okay. get it all lined up before your medical yeah. would be no my worries. advice. And how, so if you if you do wear glasses, is there any sort of time frame where, I know for, for me specifically, I, I'm not very good at rebooking at the opticians yeah. to go and get it done. So is it, are you looking to have had that eye examination within 12 months or something? Or? So, I, as long as say, according to the regulations, for a class two, if you meet the standard mm -hmm. for corrected vision yeah. and your eye examination at the time of the medical is satisfactory, right. that is good enough to pass to meet the regulations. Brilliant. But there's some additional good practice. So um, many AMEs, including myself, if you've got quite a high correction or mm -hmm. strong correction on your glasses, yeah. we'll ask you to take a specific uh, form called the Med162 okay. to the opticians to fill in before right. your initial medical. Yeah. Um, I don't do that for all pilots. I tend to limit that to people with relatively high correction on their on their spectacles. Um, thereafter, really, um, there is no obligation for a class two to have regular eye tests. Okay. But it makes sense if you wear glasses to have an annual eye test. Okay. And then you know your glasses. But are the actual medical is based on your vision on that day. It is. Yeah. It's a bit yeah. like an MOT. You are. You meet the standard on, on that day. Yeah. Um, but if we're talking about safe flying, for example, if you've got a class two initial. Yeah. It's going to last five years. Yeah. Your vision can change quite a bit in five mm. years. So I encourage people to go for an annual eye test if they were, certainly if yeah. they wear glasses. Okay. Brilliant. Any other things in the actual medical and yeah, so, yeah, so um, obviously we can't, as I've said, we concentrate on vision. We want mm -hmm. to know that your hearing's up to scratch. Yeah. That's clearly critically important for uh, radio communication. Yeah. Um, you'll have a colour vision test at your yes. initial. Yeah. Um, you must get everything right in your colour vision test yeah. um, to be able to fly day and night. Yeah. So that's really important for us to know. Um, at your initial medical, mm -hmm. everybody now gets an ECG or a heart tracing right. um, to look at their heart rhythm. Mm -hmm. That gives us an enormous amount of information. Okay. Um, and then a general medical examination. So we listen okay. to your heart, we listen to your lungs, we feel yeah. your tummy, we check yeah. your nerves. 
um, have a look in the back of your eyes, have a look mm -hmm. in your ears. So, so a pretty thorough MOT, really. Yeah. So about an yeah. hour's time to complete yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so, is there anything that the student should do in preparation for the medical? So, things that they must bring with them. Yeah. Okay, so arguably the most important thing is to make sure you're registered on the portal. Yeah. Um, because before you attend for your medical, you mm. must have completed a, a, an online uh, medical declaration form, okay. either a class two pre-assessment or a LAPL form um, before your medical. That's absolutely essential. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we can't conduct your medical now. Right. Okay. Um, as far as what to bring on the day, there are two absolutely essential things. One is photo ID, and yeah. that should be your passport or driving license. And the other is either your last medical certificate, mm -hmm. or if it's your initial, a CAA reference number, okay. which you can find on the personal details section of the portal what near the top of the page. Uh, without those two bits of information, I can't log into the system and we can't uh, do your medical on the day. So everything's on computer now? Isn't yeah, it? absolutely yeah. all of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Students with pre-existing medical conditions, is it worthwhile them having like a pre-consultation with you first? or? So I... I what I often ask is there a, when somebody books a medical with me on the phone, if they're comfortable to have that conversation over yeah. a phone, and obviously that is entirely up to the pilot, mm -hmm. I tend to ask if there's any significant medical history that I mm -hmm. might need to know about, just because there may be things they can do before their medical okay. that will help. When, when you say significant medical history, what particularly are you... So, so I'm usually looking for the common things that catches mm -hmm. out. Um, the commonest thing that catches people mm -hmm. out is a his history of asthma. Okay. So, d to give an example, if you're currently on treatment for asthma, yeah. for a class 2 medical, you mm -hmm. will need a respiratory specialist report right. and you'll need some other specialist testing. And people are often quite surprised at that. Yeah. Um, and that's anybody on current treatment or mm -hmm. who's had treatment within the last two years for a class 2. Okay. So, that by far and away, I think, is the, the one that catches people out the most. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's difficult, you know, obviously uh, past medical history can be so diverse and so broad, um, but if people are prepared to have a bit of a conversation about things yeah. they perceive as significant, yeah. I can help them understand A, whether that's going to be a significant issue for them getting a pilot's licence or not, yeah. but also there may be certain reports and things that they've got to have that they can yeah. bring with them. So medication then, um, yeah. if they take any medication, they probably need to tell yeah. you what that is first and why. Yeah. Um, and then, because I, I had an issue actually once with my medical where there was a medication I was taking that wasn't suitable. Um, yeah. And so I had to change that medication and I think it was about six months where I had to demonstrate that it worked for the purpose and yeah. you know there wasn't any side effects and that yes. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, right, so are there any common conditions for refusal of a medical? Okay, so I'd say no. Um, okay. So I think there is a mis misconception that refusal is a common thing yeah. in flying medicals. Yeah. It's not. Okay. It's actually really, really unusual. Okay. Um, it's much more common to get what's called a referral. Right. Um, which is why we can't issue the medical on the day. Yes. Um, because we need more information or okay. reports from your GP or your specialist. Yeah. Um, there are some conditions that, that are just incompatible with flying. Yeah. Um, again, they, they, they are many and varied potentially, yeah. but not common in yeah. people who attend for flying. So, for example, a history of uh, seizures yes. is, is yeah. going to likely be, yeah. to be an issue for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, significant mental health history mm -hmm. may well be an issue. Um, it's not impossible with a mental yeah. health history to get a pilot's license, yeah. but it's going to put some hurdles yeah. in there. I guess it depends on the severity of your history with it. Absolutely, yeah. To, yeah. yeah. So, so in a nutshell, what you're saying is the refusals are fairly uncommon, but yeah. it's quite, you know, it's, it's regular that you might see things that need further work. To... Yeah, and I, 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 it's difficult for me to quote what percentage of medicals yeah. um, need that. I think in initials, it's probably a bit more common than, than revalidation yeah. and renewal. Yeah. Um, where we need to get more reports and and most of the time with those reports the AME can make the decision and okay. um, there are some things that are, are, are mandatory referrals mm -hmm. to the CAA down at Gatwick mm -hmm. mental health would be one of those yep. um, where um, we have to liaise with the air medical services down at Gatwick for, for a decision yeah
Okay, so let's look at if a, if a medical is refused completely. Yeah. Is there any um, appeal process or anything yes. like that? Yes, yeah, there is. Um, so there's, uh, you can apply for what's called a secondary review. Okay. Um, so you can get that information either direct from the CAA website, yeah. um, should you be in that position, or via the AME who's done your medical, they should okay. be able to provide you with the relevant information. Yeah. Okay. Um, you apply then for a secondary review with the CAA. Okay. okay. Yeah. So in terms of selecting an LAPL or a class two medical, yeah. um, do you think if there's any sort of advice you could give it to anybody about uh, pre-existing medical conditions if they were to choose one or the other or is not I suppose it's difficult I think it's really difficult it's yeah. probably a conversation to have with an AME yeah, uh, about yeah, your yeah. own individual circumstances Absolutely. really yeah. Okay. yeah okay so if we if we're talking about straightforward class 2 medical initial yeah. What's the kind of budget for that these days? So again, um, all AMEs are independent practitioners, so set yeah. their own prices. Okay. Um, roughly in the two hundred pound mark, probably two hundred okay. to two hundred and fifty pounds for a class and two initial. And ECG is standard, isn't it? No? So, so ECG is mandatory for every yeah. class two initial at all okay. ages now. Yeah. Is that charged in addition, or is it included? Or? Uh, so again, it depends on the individual AME. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if we said like two hundred to two hundred and fifty pounds, that's for around initial, the ballpark. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah. obviously, if they do have any complications, they may have to pay for further support and things to, to go through the process. Yes, so yeah. probably the commonest is a, a, what's called an ECG overread. Mm -hmm. So if your ECG is not perfectly normal, yeah. um, there are a number of um, abnorm minor abnormalities sometimes that require yeah. an overread by a CAA cardiologist. That's okay. a small additional fee. Okay, brilliant. And would that be something so they'd have to go somewhere else to, or is that just a No, case that's all done by your Amy, right, um, okay. with, directly with a okay. cardiologist. Yeah. Okay. Rob's five tips for getting prepared for your medical. Go for okay. it. Okay. So these might not be what people are expecting. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we've touched on a couple already. So first of all, make sure you're registered for the portal in good time. Yep. Um, if you if your registration on the portal hasn't gone through and you haven't completed your uh, pre-assessment, we can't do your medical on the day as okay. AME. So that's critically important. Um, the other thing is to remember to bring what you need to bring. Um, so it's critical that we've got photo ID, so that has to be passport or driving license, and we absolutely need your CAA reference number. The easiest place, if you've already got a certificate, is on your last medical certificate. Without that, again, without those two bits of information, even if you're on the portal, yep. we still can't do your medical. Okay. Um, third one, um, just from uh, harsh experience over the years, is make sure you get here on time and plan ahead. Yeah. It's always a bad starting point for your medical if you've got stuck in traffic, you're running 10 minutes late and you're yeah. a bit flustered. Yeah. Uh, it's guaranteed to put your blood pressure up. Yeah. yeah. Um, and your heart rate up yeah. and your adrenaline levels up. Yeah. Um, so planning ahead and getting there in plenty of time makes yeah. sense. I didn't think about that, but it's, yeah, yeah. It's quite yeah. Hard. it makes a big difference. Yeah. If you're starting on the back foot, you yeah. don't feel in a good place for your medical, that's, yeah. that's not going to uh, help you on the day. Um, the other one, again, we've touched on, but I've seen this far too many times now, is for people who wear glasses. Okay. Um, if you've got a prescription, bring that, and we would always be very grateful to see that. But even more importantly, bring the glasses you intend to fly in, yeah. because that is what we'll be testing you in. Yeah. If you wear very focals uh, and you intend to fly in those, bring them. Don't bring your yeah. reading glasses, because you will fail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Seems obvious. Testing. It, but... <laughs> it does seem obvious, but I've seen it far too many times yeah. now. Uh, and the final thing is probably a bit more along the line of what people are expecting me to say, and that's avoid the uh, avoid excesses on the morning or the day of your medical and the night before. Okay. And that's not just the obvious excesses like uh, having a, a little too much alcohol or a big meal, both yeah. of which are to be avoided. Um, but it can be at the opposite end of the spectrum, like not doing too much exercise or going right. for a long run on the morning of your medical, because yeah. uh, that can um, lead to a little bit of blood in your urine, for example. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so um, avoid excesses yes. the day before yeah. and the day of your medical. So that's, that's the other thing, actually, which is quite amusing, <laughs> is because we, uh, Rob is here to, like, twice a week mo most of the time, uh, doing medicals and one of the things is that obviously you're delivering a urine sample so people are sat outside patiently with a full bladder jigging up and down waiting for their medical <laughs> bursting for the loo so that's another tip I think is make sure you've had plenty of water to drink just before the yeah, medical yeah yeah absolutely I mean we don't need much we uh, yeah. to, to dip but occasionally people 
uh, do find it difficult to produce anything. So yeah, it makes yeah. sense to have. So a, if you walk uh, in, don't go for a week. Yeah. Hold it in. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good advice. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to add to it? At all? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think I think the important thing is that you know we aren't here to try and catch people out. Yeah. It's an objective test of people's yeah. medical fitness to fly. Absolutely. It's a, it's a, it's a really important part of the the safety function to keep yeah. everyone who who enjoys this hobby yeah, safe. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what this is about. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time, Rob. Good to no, see you today. No problem. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.